uh, just as it was part of the system here in the ICTY, it should be part of uh, the trials that will be conducted in the region. In that context, we can uh, uh, boast with one positive example, and this is the uh, Chamber for War Crimes uh, with the State Court of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and this uh, um, could serve as an example to be translated into the other countries of the region. On the other hand, such an institutionalized, uh, institutionalized form of defense council would show that uh, all of the elements that form part of such trials do have an institutional backing had that in the ICTY, which has tended to be, uh, have its third organ as the prosecution, it hasn't as the Lebanon Tribunal now has as the fourth organ, uh, the defense. And the Sierra Leone court set up a defense office to ensure that the defense had equality of arms with the prosecution. Do you think, see that as one of the failures of the ICTY, uh, that needs to be remedied in the future and in the national courts. It is definitely a shortcoming. It was definitely in the first 10 years when uh, not even an, a formal association of defense council was in existence. And the contribution to the ICTY uh, um, legacy was one of uh, individuals and not of an institution. But do you see a time, can you envisage a time uh, when Belgrade could have a museum uh, dedicated to uh, the memory of the uh, war crimes uh, and the victims of those war crimes uh, in the 90s, which replayed the Scorpions video, which showed extracts of the cross-examination of, of defendants, of Serbian defendants? Can you envisage a time in the future where that will happen? Most definitely, this is a matter that needs to be resolved uh, both for the sake of Serbia and other countries in the region and also for the sake of individual citizens and uh, for the sake of countries and their state institutions. I'm not getting a translation on Channel 2. Yes, are I having said, trouble. Yes, I, I believe that that should be uh, not only because of the states and uh, but because of the citizens. Because of the citizens, they will one day come to see the see justice done and see that justice was done in the Hague at the ICTY. Pravda u Hagu pred justice be, having been done uh, in The Hague uh, before this court and uh, in the region. As the uh, prosecution, prosecutor, uh, do you see as, as the nuts and bolts of delivering on the legacy vision that President Robinson has outlined? I would say our most important contribution to the legacy today, I think it's to finish all our ongoing cases to make sure that we have the budget and the resources to do so. And I think our very important contribution to legacy is to make sure that the remaining fugitives are arrested because if they are not arrested, this will be a permanent impact, negative impact on, on legacy. Uh, so There are only um, two to come though, aren't there? There are two uh, as far as the IC2I is concerned in, 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 indeed. Um, having said that, um, we are of course uh, working on a number of, of projects uh, together with colleagues in, in the region. Uh, as you um, know and as you mentioned a number of years ago, cooperation between uh, the Office of the Prosecutor and offices in the region was very vertical. Um, today this is a very horizontal cooperation and I see all my, my colleagues from, from the region being, being present here. So it's a totally different dynamic 
of, of cooperation. And in this context, uh, as the, the President has mentioned, the ultimate success of the tribunal will, at the end of the day, also depend on how this work is continued by colleagues in the region where, as we all know, an important progress has been, been done the last years. As Office of the Prosecutor, we are involved in a number of projects which will be discussed uh, today. Um, we have daily interaction with our colleagues in the region, but I would uh, mention perhaps one very specific and new project we, we put in place last year is to have liaison prosecutors from Serbia, uh, Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina integrated in our office, working as well for prosecutors in the region on their cases, as well as on, on, on our cases, to, uh, to really um, stress uh, this, this, this new level of cooperation we have today. But you Cooperation is all very well, but you still don't get extradition between countries in the region, do you? There are indeed still a number of legal obstacles. There has been uh, some progress uh, very recently in relation to uh, execution of, of sentences in the region if, if, if a conviction has, has been, been obtained. But in terms of extradition, it's still, it's still an issue. Transfer of proceedings, it's still, it's still different. Uh, that's uh, for sure an issue we will discuss uh, tomorrow in uh, the workshop with uh, representatives from the judiciary. And do you foresee difficulties in regional trials, for example, in witness intimidation and encouraging people to come forward? It is a reality that uh, today, a number of years after the conflict, witness uh, intimidation, witness protection is still an important issue. So it's an issue of concern where we have uh, a good interaction with, with our colleagues on the ground, but it's still uh, an issue of concern, uh, as you can see uh, in, in the different proceedings at the tribunal. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, look at uh, some of the uh, cooperation that's going to be necessary uh, in relation to the tribunal's institutional memory, as uh, President Robertson explained it this morning. Oh dear. <laughs> Tell us what oh dear stands for. Well, the uh, acronym is uh, awful in English, but mm -hmm. uh, in Russian, you can listen to this, is BDIPCH. <laughs> and it stands for Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights. Mm -hmm. It is the central human rights and rule of law institution of the OSCE, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Mm -hmm. And we are engaged right now in an important project uh, concerning the legacy of the tribunal, together with the tribunal itself, with the United Nations Institute from Torino, and generously financed by the European Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, and this project is about transferring knowledge and experience and materials from this place, from the tribunal in The Hague, to the courts and other players in the region. How difficult is that going to be? I mean, this court must have an archive of uh, millions of pages of uh, documents. Uh, do you, are they transcribed into local languages, for example? Yes, it's an important part of the process is transcription of the court proceedings into the Bosnian, Croat, Serbian languages, development of research, electronic research tools and the like. It's a gigantic, uh, it's a gigantic project, uh, it will take some time and it will take money. That's why it's so important that the European Union stepped in with this. <laughs> we'll come to Pierre Morel in a minute when money is concerned. But uh, first of all, let's look at the size of the problem. I mean, translating these vast trials, uh, four years of this and that, uh, is not going, is, is going to drown uh, people in, in local areas, isn't it? Don't you need to digest them and to synthesize them and perhaps publish extracts of uh, important judgments or significant evidence? Maybe, but then one could lose some important details. The details are important in a trial, especially in a complex trials like war crimes trials. Mm. What is important is to bring closer to the players in the region what has been happening here for so many years because they are the ones that will continue the work. You mentioned several times in your introduction the Nuremberg uh, trials. See, 65 years after the Second World War, we still have war crimes trials dating back to uh, prosecuting the people who committed those crimes back in the Second World War. So one can safely assume that we are going to have this kind of trials for decades to come, and all of them, or most of them, will take place in the region. That's why it's, it's so important to transfer this kind of knowledge, experience, and materials right there. 
in local language and with tools applicable, uh, available for the, for the local practitioners. And not that, that uh, relates not only to the judges, uh, defense lawyers and the uh, prosecutors, but I would say also to investigators, to victim and uh, witness support professionals, and also to outreach professionals. Okay. And these all play an important part in our project. John Hocking, as the registrar, you're the guardian, I guess, the custodian of this vast wealth of archival material. Uh, what support are you going to need to make the vision legacy strategy successful? <coughs> yeah, thank support you, like that. Thank you, Jeffrey. Idea. The archives of the tribunal uh, are already enormous. Uh, millions of pages, millions of pages of documents, hundreds of thousands of pages of transcripts. But let's remember Archives in itself is a pretty dry topic, but what we're talking about, what we're talking about uh, is the testimony of over 5,500 witnesses who so far have passed through the doors of the tribunal and given their evidence. And most of those witnesses have been victim witnesses. And they've been able to give their evidence in an environment where they felt secure, where they felt safe and able to tell their story and to tell it honestly. So the transfer of our archives in a language, in the local language, to, to um, the regions of the former Yugoslavia is extremely important. It's a critical element of the legacy of the tribunal. But are those testimonies taken <coughs> here under uh, reasonable and fair circumstances and subject to cross-examination, are they going to be admissible in evidence in local courts or are you simply going to uh, send them over as part of a digest for prosecutors to uh, use as an information base? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> what's important is that we've listened to what the local judiciaries want and they've asked us for these transcripts uh, in Serbo Croatian, in BCS. Uh, the admissibility of those transcripts, of course, rests on, on the local judicial processes. But um, we are in the process of undertaking the transcription of those archives, of those transcripts. Will you need to go beyond transcription of this massive material and actually move on a more sophisticated level and invite digesting, invite case reports, uh, invite uh, actual boiling down uh, to a level at which it can be of practical use to uh, lawyers working in courts in other countries. Fortunately, we've got a lot of modern technology now that is able to, uh, we're able to search transcripts electronically um, and that's part of, of the process of the transfer of the knowledge from the ICTY to the local judiciary. Part of that includes the technical expertise, the uh, intellectual property and the uh, information technology that we've developed over the years here. What about the oral tradition uh, of handing on? Have you got any training courses in mind? Is the court before it packs its bags going to uh, go over, go and train uh, lawyers and judges? Um, we've had ongoing cooperation with the local judiciary for many years now. And to me, it's, it's very much a two-way process. Um, both 